Hi, welcome to Ask Dr. B, your YouTube pediatrician. Today I'm going to talk about recurrent infections in children under 5 after receiving a question from Anne, whose 17 month old child has had tons of infections through the winter period and she's worried about her child's immunity. Don't worry Anne, by this time of the year we have seen tons of children coming in and out of A&E or GP practices with infection after infection and many parents become concerned about their child's immunity. Most children will have around 3 to 6 infections in a 12 month period, but a child of under 5 who has 12 infections in a year is still within the normal range. The difficulty is, most of these infections merge, so it's hard to tell when one infection ends and the next one begins, making the number of infections a child has a very not accurate measure of how unwell they are and whether or not we need to be concerned about their immunity. So when a paediatrician sees a child who's had lots of infections, we're trying to categorize them into one of three categories. Number one, is there something wrong with their immune system? Number two, is there something wrong with another system that's making them prone to have lots of infections? And number three, is there nothing wrong and is this all within normal range? Since the number of infections is not a great indicator of whether or not we need to be worried, we look at other factors and our clues often lie in how sick they get when they get an infection, where the infections are happening, what organisms are causing the infection, and any other associated features such as they're not growing very well or their development isn't what we'd expect. I'm going to go through each one of these and outline what we look for when assessing a child has had lots of infections. How sick they get. Does your child need hospital admission for oxygen, IV antibiotics or intravenous fluids when other children with a similar virus cope just fine at home? If your child has lots of infections and lots of admissions for infections, it's helpful to go to the same hospital each time. If you go hopping from one hospital to another, hoping to get the right answer or the right investigations, it sometimes masks this kind of pattern of repeated admissions. Also, do they end up in intensive care whenever they get sick? And again, if you're at the same hospital, repeated admissions to intensive care will raise the alarm that we need to look for something underlying these repeated infections. Where the infection is. Location, location, location. If your child is having repeated infections of the same ear or the same lung or the same nostril, that raises concern that there's something about the structure of that nostril that's making them prone to have infections again and again. The same applies to children that have recurrent bladder infections. If they have more than two infections and they're under five, we really need to look at their plumbing system to make sure there's nothing about the way it drains that allows little pools of bacteria to collect and reproduce. We'll also become concerned if your child has repeated admissions with skin abscesses or episodes of fever where we repeatedly struggle to find the source. I probably should highlight that we don't always find the source of many viral infections and many fevers. And that's absolutely fine if your child copes with it and their immune system deals with it. It's the children that get very sick, yet we still don't really know where the infection's coming from, that causes us to worry. Unusual organisms. Unusual organisms will often be identified by either your GP or the hospital admission. And that's why we do certain tests to find out what bacteria is causing these infections. Because if you're growing a bacteria that the immune system should pretty much be able to handle, this raises concern that there's something about the immune system that's allowing this bacteria to cause overwhelming infection. The same applies for thrush that's difficult to treat. Associated features. I remember when I was a trainee and I was asking a parent a lot of questions about their household and their family history and I got accused of being a nosy bugger. Now some of these questions we ask about the associated features may seem to have nothing to do with the reason that you came into A&E that day, but they help us paint a picture about whether or not there's something else we need to be looking at underlying this infection. The type of things that we may ask about are your child's birth whether the umbilical cord fell off within the expected time. Sounds really strange, but it's a really important clue. How your child's been growing, how their development is coming along, whether other family members had similar illnesses, whether your child is vaccinated, whether anyone smokes at home, whether your child has any siblings, whether your child goes to daycare, 
we are not just being nosy. A lot of these things that we ask let us know whether we need to be doing further tests about an underlying immunodeficiency. In fact, there was a study from Manchester that showed that if children have had repeated admission to IV antibiotics and a family history and weren't growing, there was an 89% chance there was an underlying immunodeficiency. Now, if we just focused on that episode of tonsillitis and asked only about that, we wouldn't pick up the other two factors that will let us think, better be doing some tests. So Anne, I hope this video answers your question about whether or not you need to be concerned about your child's immune system. I've also added a link to the Jeffrey Model Foundation, which gives some really good advice about the warning signs of an immunodeficiency. Thanks for watching Ask Dr. B. Let me know what you thought. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified every single time I post a new video.